Welcome to the protagonist pub. Can you believe it's almost October? My name is Tammy and this is where characters gather. Okay, it's pile of possibilities time and uh, I have quite the eclectic mix. I, I'm not gonna lie, it is quite the eclectic mix. So, it should be an interesting month. I can guarantee that. I am, uh, hmm, that's an idea. Okay, first up, what am I going to read for Catholic fiction this month? Oh, Lord. And um, it's like she knows the neighbor drama has begun. Okay. Uh, I am probably going to read Song for the Road by Kathleen Bassey. This was recommended to me by the wonderful Sharon M. Peterson. I have mentioned it before in my Catholic fiction video, which I will link down below. I am looking forward to this one. I know it is musically based and I think it will be a very good palate cleanser between some of the chonkers sitting before me. And speaking of palate cleansers, Joanne Fluke. The Coconut Layer Cake Murder. Haven't read this one. I know I'm going to need a palate cleanser between some of these very chunky books. So, Hannah Swenson is a good one. I know I mentioned this recently in a tag video, which you will not have seen before this comes out. But, I know I mentioned it in a video coming out. So, oh that sounds tasty. Corned beef and pepper jack quiche is a recipe in here. That sounds very tasty. Maybe I'll make that for dinner here soon. Okay, now, as you all know, October is Victober. And I, for some reason this, this year, am very, very much in the mood for Victober. Like, for the last two weeks, all I've wanted to do is read Victorian, which is not normal for me. But, you know, when the mood strikes, fill up your reading list. And uh, I'm going to do some Victorian adjacent. I'm going to do some actual Victorian literature. I will link the announcement videos down below. I don't have the prompts written out. I know some of what I'm planning to read fulfills prompts. Some of it does not. I am okay with that. I'm not, you know, if I fulfill a prompt, that's great. If I don't, I'm not going to be upset with myself. So, um, some of these you have not seen before. They'll be in the book haul video, which is coming out next month. But, so you get a sneak peek. Okay. I was planning to read Dracula in September. It realistically didn't happen. I have two copies of it now and I will read it in um, October it is Victorian literature I have not read it yet so it is a big old chunky book and I'm hopeful that it isn't overly you know vampires aren't my thing I you know I have never been overly interested in Dracula, but it's one of those things I need to read, if that makes sense. So, I'm going to read it in October. Probably, uh, not probably, I know I'm vlogging it. And I'm probably starting that vlog slightly before October, but that's okay. Mm. All right, so next up would be um, 
I picked up a copy of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and Other Stories. We'll talk about this edition in my book haul. There's a problem with it. Um, and there are, I believe I counted six stories in here. I don't know which one I'm going to read. It may be A Study in Scarlet. It's the shortest. Not that that's, you know, a problem for me. Although they're all pretty much the same length. I guess the adventures of Sherlock Holmes are a bunch of short stories. So, yeah, the rest of these are short stories. So, that is okay. I will read A Study in Scarlet. I have never read Holmes before, I admit. Hello, Kalua. Hello, baby girl. Um, I admit Holmes isn't my favorite detective in the universe. But, you know, maybe reading Doyle will change my mind. Did you come to say hi to the nice people? Next up is a book I have wanted to read forever. Um, there's also a problem with this book. We'll discuss that in the book haul video as well. That is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I've wanted to read this for a very long time. Hi. You're a very good girl. Do you want to read it too? Okay, you can read it with mommy. Yeah, you can read it with mommy. you my sweet girl. Yeah, you're my sweet girl. Yes, you are. You're my sweet girl. Okay, lay down. And this is a nice, big, chunky, you know, edition. Um, not counting the pages of notes and the appendices. It is 627 pages. So it's really not that bad. Um, so we shall see. I've heard nothing but good things. It's probably right up my alley. It's definitely Victorian. And there is no reason I haven't read this other than obstinacy. So time to not be obstinate okay the last one is vanity fair by william makepeace thackeray now i remember this being assigned in junior english and i don't remember how i got out of reading it but i did because i did not like the first chapter and that has stuck with me forever. However, when I picked this up at the library bookshop earlier, or this last weekend, I read the opening, you know, couple of paragraphs of the first chapter, and I don't understand why I didn't like it. So, although this is written in Victorian era, it is Regency era based. So I may save this until I start reading The Forest next year for the year and, you know, read this in conjunction with the Regency area, era that appears in The Forest. So I may or may not get to this this month. And if I don't, that's fine. But it is something I am now incredibly interested in. And um, I'll read you the blurb on the back. Thackeray's upper class Regency world is a noisy jostling commercial fairground, predominantly driven by acquisitive greed and soulless materialism, in which the narrator himself plays a brilliantly versatile role as a serial comic observer. Although subtitled A Novel Without a Hero, Vanity Fair follows the fortunes of two contrasting but interlinked lives, through the retiring Amelia Smedley and the brilliant Becky Sharp. Thackeray examines the position of women in an intensely exploitive male world. When Vanity Fair was published in 1884, Charlotte Bronte commented, the more I read Thackeray's works, the more certain I am that he stands alone. Alone is in his sagacity, alone in his truth, alone in his feeling. Thackeray is a titan. So, it is time that Tammy catches up on Thackeray. Okay, everything else that is 
Victorian in nature is Victorian adjacent. Um, I'm going to include this. I may or may not get to it before October, but it is definitely Victorian adjacent. That is The Yard by Alex Grecian. And this takes place in 1889 London, so it's definitely in the Victorian era, but it was not written by a Victorian author, and thus, you know, it doesn't qualify as Victober. It does in my book, so. Um, but I may get to this in September. We shall see. I'm trying very hard to get to this in time. And the next two are definitely Victorian adjacent. They are definitely on my list. First up is Miss Eliza's English Kitchen by Annabelle Abbs. And I will read you the back. England, 1835, is awash with thrilling new ingredients from rare spices to exotic fruits. But no one knows how to use them. When Eliza Acton is told by her publisher to write a cookery book, instead of the poetry she loves, she refuses until her bankrupt father is forced to flee the country. As a woman, Eliza has few options. Although she's never set foot in a kitchen, she begins collecting recipes and teaching herself to cook. Much to her surprise, she discovers a talent and a passion for the culinary arts. Eliza hires Young, Destitute, and Kirby to assist her as they cook together and learns about poetry, love, and ambition. The two develop a radical friendship, breaking the boundaries of class while creating new ways of writing recipes. But when Anne discovers a secret in Eliza's past and finds a voice of her own, their friendship starts to fray. Based on the true story of the first modern cookery writer, Miss Eliza's English Kitchen is a spellbinding novel about female friendship, the struggle for independence, and the transcendent pleasures and solace of food. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I love to cook, like, I, I love to cook. There are recipes included in the back, a couple. Um, I, I am looking forward to this one a lot. I am, seriously, I am very much looking forward to this one a lot. And, you know, it's just over 350 pages, so it's not a huge time investment. Next up is Bronte's Mistress by Finola Austin. And I hold this months ago and I haven't shown it. So I'm going to put it in the book haul video for that's coming up. And I will just read you the top blurb in this um, video. So I am going to read you the top inside blurb. They claim she brought down literature's most famous family. Now, Mrs. Robinson tells her side of the story. I, this book is 298 pages. It isn't going to be a giant time investment. It's definitely Victorian adjacent. And that um, relationship between Bronwell and Mrs. Robinson is... One of those little fascinating snippets of history. And, um, yeah. I want to know. I really, really want to know. Okay. So, that leaves two more books on my list. Neither of which is Victorian. This is... Unless I'm very much mistaken, this one is Regency. It is, well... Technically, it's not. It's 1820. Just post-Regency. And that is The Shadows of Swanford Alley by Julie Clausen. This has been sitting on my shelf for far too long. It, it, mm, if I want something slow and immersive, this, this sounds great. I'm going to read you the back. Agatha Christie meets Jane Austen in this atmospheric Regency tale brimming with mystery, intrigue, and romance. When Miss Rebecca Lane returns to her home village after a few years away, her brother begs for a favor. Go to nearby Swanford Abbey and deliver his manuscript to an author staying there who could help him get published. Feeling responsible for her brother's desperate state, 
She reluctantly agrees. The medieval monastery turned grand hotel is rumored to be haunted. Once there, Rebecca begins noticing strange things, including a figure in a hooded black gown gliding silently through the abbey's cloisters. For all its renovations and veneer of luxury, the ancient foundations seem to echo with whispers of the past, including her own. For there she encounters Sir Frederick, magistrate, widower, and former neighbor, who long ago broke her heart. When the famous author is found murdered in the abbey, Sir Frederick begins questioning staff, guests, and quickly discovers that several people held grudges against the man, including Miss Lane and her brother. Haunted by a painful betrayal in his past, Sir Frederick searches for answers, but is torn between his growing feelings for Rebecca and his pursuit of the truth, for Miss Lane is clearly hiding something. I need to know, what is she hiding? How is a lady gliding mysteriously through the cloisters? I, I need to know. Okay, and last up on the list is a book I've wanted to get to for a while. And uh, Chrissy sent me a message thinking I had already read it. <sighs> but I had not. And that would be Beneath the Forsaken City by Carl... Carla Lorano. This is book two in the Song of Seer trilogy. And a, I love the cover. Who, who could not love that cover? And um, I need to know what happened. I uh, am looking forward to finishing this and going back to my conversation with Chrissy. Again, this is 299 pages. This is not a length challenge for me, so I will read you the back. With a storm on the horizon, who will stand against the darkness? Connor and Ayn have barely escaped Seer with their lives. Connor knows he must return to find the harp that could end the Red Druid's reign of terror, but he must first see Ayn safely to her family, family home on the Isle of Amentia. When an unnatural storm tears them apart, they find themselves in even more danger than that which they fled. Because magic is not the only thing to fear in Ain's homeland, where the Sofrende invaders harry the coasts and shifting clan alliances make it impossible to know who to trust, Connor and Ain must cling to the whispers of Kamandu's plans for them and their enduring love for one another, even when the future looks darkest. But with betrayal at every turn, will they give in to fear? Or will they learn to depend on Kamadu completely before all hope is lost? I loved the first book. I am very much looking forward to this book. And then I can read book three and mark a trilogy off my list, which would be amazing this year. I don't think I've completed a single series all year. Yes, yes, I have. I take it back. Minus the Christmas book, I have finished the... Um, Ivy Hill trilogy from Julie Klassen. So I, I finished at least one series this year. <laughs> oh, that's that's grasping Timmy. Okay. That is the October pile of possibilities. I'm sure it does not adequately reflect everything I'm going to read this month or in October, but you know, it's an ambitious list with lots of big old chunky books on it. And oh, I know I forgot a book. I have a Dave book. I have started this one. That is The Fate of the Dwarves by Marcus Heinz Heights. This is the fourth book in the Dwarf series. And I'm So it's the fourth book, and I am a hundred and forty-five pages in. 752 pages so I only have 600 pages left to go no problem right I really enjoy the enjoy these they are fantasy they are on the grim dark scale but they're by far not you know the as Chrissy would say the grimmiest grim dark there is there is a lot of hope in this grim dark series 
But don't get me wrong. If you don't like Grimdark and you don't start this series. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. It is the fourth book in a series. But if you like dwarves, if you like fantasy, if Grimdark doesn't bother you overly much, I highly recommend the, the, these books. Okay, now that is the end of my October staggering pile of possibilities. I lie. I forgot. Autumn and Sycamore Park by C.P. Ward is the book club choice. I know I'm reading this on the very first day of October. I can't wait. It's nice. It's short. There are some more books in the series, so if I need palette cleansers, I will be picking up those as palette cleansers. Okay, now I promise that is the last book in the staggering pile of possibilities. What are you reading? Leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.